This is a really interesting story. I know a lot of you guys were interested in the uh, the Michael Burry uh, short um, where he placed um, a put options that were wor- have a nominal value of some 1.6 billion. He did not bet exactly 1.6 billion or whatever um, against the market, but should there be a crash and a recession, he actually would profit very handsomely. So it, the question is, is that he is a, is he the Cassandra? You know, he's often saying things are going to crash, and sometimes it happens, sometimes it doesn't. But Warren Buffett, it seems, you know, the investor, uh, also appears to be preparing or possibly for some sort of downturn. Let's go ahead and put this up there on the screen. This is some new analysis from the economist Steve Hankey. And what he points out is that the Berkshire Hathaway CEO has sold some $8 billion worth of stocks and slowed pace of buybacks just last quarter, was sparking a, quote, 13% rise in a money pile with a near record $147 billion in cash. Quote, the sprawling conglomerate has now disposed of a net $33 billion over the last three quarters, fueling a stash of cash, cash equivalents, and treasury bills. These are consistent with the anticipation of a recession and the fact that stocks are currently pricey. Quote, it is also consistent with his long-term track record of piling up cash in anticipation of storm clouds ahead with the capacity to pounce on bargains once the storm hits. So I think that you put those together and it's pretty clear here that uh, both in terms of the overall price of assets and in terms of Buffett's long track record, which we have decades now, in order to observe, he's got a very consistent playbook. And in that playbook, he anticipates some sort of crash that could come. The other important thing to remember, too, with not Burry, but really with Buffett, is that people track and think about things that he thinks so much that sometimes his expectations can actually become reality. Mm. He's such a power player that for when if other fund managers are like, oh, Warren Buffett's pulling back, they're like, oh, well, then we got to pull back. And that actually could cause a contraction in itself, even if that wasn't going to happen in the first place. Mm. Regardless, the overall net effect would be the same in terms of his ability in order to profit so some crash happen in the future. Same in terms of Michael Burry, should his uh, options go ahead and pull off. And it's one of those where in our economy, nobody knows what the hell is going on. Interest rates are sky high, 7 8% or whatever, whenever it comes to a mortgage, 7% whenever it comes to a car loan. But at the same time, inflation remains very steady. The new price of a car still remains above $50,000. Uh, we've got record high gas prices. Let's go and put this up there on the screen. Gas prices are actually highest that they've ever been in 2023. Um, some of that is due to the hurricane. A lot of it is also due to global, global instability. Hurricane aren't going anywhere. Uh, Also, we had the oil production cuts by both Saudi Arabia and Russia, which continue to keep prices high. All of this shows that you've got sticky inflation. The Fed, it seems to be done-ish in terms of raising their interest rates. The unemployment rate is very odd. It's both low, but also wages are not necessarily keeping up with inflation. The uh, overall phenomenon of bargaining power, some of it remains, but it's not even close to what it was in 2021. So if you look at these two investors, both of whom have a or at least one in particular has a very good track record, you very much could see the scenario where what they're saying is very counter to what the Biden folks and what some of the other mainstream economists claim is going to happen, which is like, oh, we're going to get the soft landing and everything's going to be fine. Yeah, so there were, uh, you know, several months ago, there were a lot of mainstream economists that were sounding the alarm, expecting a recession, et cetera. Once inflation started to cool, right? There's still persistent inflation, but it is lower than what it was. And the Fed basically stopped um, hiking interest rates. Additionally, they thought, all right, maybe we did pull Mm -hmm. off this soft landing. The reason potentially why some of these major investors are having second thoughts about that analysis is uh, there's a number of factors here. All of them we've been talking about here on this show, but just to to go through them. You've got an AI boom that could really be a bubble, yep. right? That's one piece. You've got commercial real estate that is in a world of trouble and could have major follow-on effects for ordinary people and for banks, especially mid-size and small banks as well. And we've already had seen the shakiness of some of these banks' balance sheets when we had the Silicon Valley bank collapse. So that's another piece. We just had there up on the screen, student loan debt repayments are set to start. Um, it's actually... The um, there have been a lot of attempts from the Biden administration, which I appreciate, to try to you know make this uh, less painful, to try to you know have income-based repayment plans to allow for forbearance, et cetera. But that has made this all incredibly complicated. 
Um, in this report, they talk about this one woman who's trying to get through to her student loan, like the person who actually owns her loan now because like some 40% or whatever of these loans have been sold off during the interim period since they last had to make payments. And the person she got through to at her student loan servicer told her to call back in January when maybe call volume would be lower. So <laughs> that tells you how things are going over there on the student loan debt repayment front. But I mean, this is a massive blow to a lot of Americans who have not had to make payments for quite a while and are gonna have to restart in October. I mean, this is just around the corner. So that's another hit to the economy. So you've got AI potential bubble. You've got massive commercial real estate issues. I think everybody agrees with that. You've got student loan debt payments set to restart. You have um, consumers piling up massive amounts of debt. We saw credit card debt reaching over a trillion dollars, so people becoming increasingly overextended. And then the other piece, Sagar, is as we've always discussed with the Fed, there is a lag between the actions they take and when those actions really hit the economy. A lot of this, you know, the, they project a lot of confidence and like they pretend like they know exactly how this is all gonna work and how it's all gonna impact the economy. They don't know, they're guessing. And so there is speculation that potentially the full force of those interest rate hikes hasn't even hit the economy yet and that there could be a lot more damaging impacts to come down the road once those interest rates really show up in terms of their impact on the economy. So those are some of the factors that exist that would weigh on the negative side of things could end up getting a lot worse than what a lot of mainstream economists are kind of anticipating or predicting at this point. Yeah, exactly. And, uh, you know, it's one of those where we just have no idea where things are going to end up. But it's one of those where we should be prepared for any of those bad scenarios and to fit with all of the politics that we have been discussing for the top portion of our show. A recession would dramatically change the electoral calculus. It'd oh, be one course. of those where then, I mean, how out of touch would you seem when you're obsessing over Fulton County January 6th trials whenever there's a oh, actual well, how it, straight up recession? How would on. you feel about the fact that you labeled the economy right. Bidenomics? Bidenomics. I mean, that if people could, are in a recession. How are they going to feel? I mean, I think they already don't feel great about it. If you're in a full blown recession, how right. are they going to feel about Bidenomics? If we have a full blown downturn, I mean, it would dramatically change everything. Uh, and uh, don't forget, you know, things can change completely on a dime. President George H.W. Bush had a 91% approval rating around this time in his presidency, and then he got his he got completely beaten in the election by Bill Clinton, largely because of an economic downturn that came in 92, of which Clinton was able to capitalize on. Even back in, the, even Jimmy Carter actually, but most of the country had uh, turned against him, but the worst of the actual uh, recession, depression, and all that, the high interest rate phenomenon mostly came in the latter year of his presidency and just completely changed the way that he was able to campaign. So don't forget that the last year, uh, specific, specifically economics in the middle of what is going on in election is so, so important to what actually ends up happening in said election. Hey guys, if you like that video, go to breakingpoints.com, become a premium subscriber and help us build the best independent media organization on the planet. That's right, we're subscriber funded, we're building something new, we wanna replace these failing mainstream media organizations. So again, to subscribe, it's breakingpoints.com.